Today we will be looking at the diagram Four Calls and a Commission. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Christ told the disciples shortly before he returned to heaven, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things which, that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Here we see that Christ gave what is known as the Great Commission. And the commission is to make disciples. And that involves going, baptizing, teaching them how to obey. And so as we think about that process, we see four calls in the commission that help us to see how Christ trained his disciples. Taking a look at John 1, 39 through 46, we see that Christ... Uh, after he had chosen the disciples, or after he had first met the disciples, Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is being translated teacher, where are you staying? And he said, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. So here we see that Christ invited two of those who were seeking him. He says, Just come and see where I am. And they spent time with him. And as they spent the rest of the day with him, we see that Christ was doing something in their lives. He was helping them to begin to understand what it meant to follow him. Christ even started to take them with him as he went to various places. Where it tells us over in chapter 2, in verses 11 and 12, this beginning of signs Jesus did in of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum. He, his mother, his brothers, and his disciples. And they did not stay there many days. But as we see here, Christ, he's doing, and he's leading them by love. He's not telling them they have to. He's giving them the opportunity to follow. And so as they follow, he's just asking them to observe. And so he's just, come and see. And as they did, they saw Christ do many different things, including miracles. And as he did that, they began to realize that he was not just an ordinary man, that he was the Son of God. And so we see that in this process, the Christ started out by saying, come and see. And so as we see in John 1, he also called other disciples and they came to see. In Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20, we see the second call. That's the call to come and grow. It says, And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. So now he says, If you follow me, you will become something you aren't. You're a fisher of fish. But he says, you will become a fisher of men. In other words, you will learn how to help others come to Christ. And that process of helping others come to Christ, they're going to be learning how to do that as Christ shows them how. As we think about that, we see that Christ calls his first disciples about a year after he began his ministry. And as he calls them, they start going with him. And in that process, we see He's going to be ministering to them in love, but he's going to be giving them opportunities to participate with him. As we see if later on in the chapter, it tells us in verses 35 through 39, Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is looking for you. But he said to them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, 
because for this purpose I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. Notice that there's a change here. Christ says, let us go into the next towns. Verse 38. So now as they went to the next towns, they were seeing Christ minister, but he also begins to give them opportunities to participate. Because now as he goes forth, he's casting out demons, he's preaching. We see that... Uh, later on, he uh, fed the 5,000 and he had them, pa he performed the miracle and the disciples passed out the food and then they gathered what was left over. But they were in the process of learning to do what Christ was doing. And they're learning little bits at a time over a period of about two and a half years. And so we see a third uh, call in Mark 3, 13 through 15, it tells us, And he went up on the, uh, on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. Then he appointed twelve, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach, to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. And so we see that Christ chooses the twelve. He chooses a smaller group for the training process because each one had to learn certain lessons as Christ taught them. And needless to say, even with 12 disciples, as you walk down the roads, you could only walk in small groups. And so even the, the uh, 12 were divided into three subgroups of uh, four each. And if you take the first, the fifth, and the ninth name of the disciples that are listed in the lists of disciples, it's always the same three. And then the next three under each of those is also the same individuals. So that the disciples were learning in small groups, one-on-one -on -one sometimes. Uh, Christ would take Peter and jo James and John with him sometimes when he went up uh, to uh, pray on the mountain and things like that. But he was helping them to learn and he was training them how to serve. So we see that as Christ uh, uh, carried out this process, of teaching them how to serve, we see that you do it. Now you do the ministry. And we see that he sent out the 12, two by two. And then later on, he sent out 70 disciples. Uh, so he had a larger group he was involved with as well as the 12. But we see that Christ was observing and encouraging them. And we see in Mark chapter six, uh, in verses 30 and 31, it says, then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while, for there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So as they went uh, out to a deserted place where he could just spend time with them, giving them opportunity to tell what they had uh, taught, what they had done, and they were excited about what they'd done and what they'd taught. And so Christ was able to just continue to guide them in the developing process. Well, we see that this process keeps on going. And after his resurrection, we see that Peter, because he denied Christ three times, thought, I'm a failure. I can't do it. And Christ won't ever want to use me again. And the other disciples, because they'd also forsaken Christ and fled, they had apparently had the same idea. And so seven of them ended up going back to fishing. And as they were fishing after the resurrection at the Sea of Galilee, we see that Christ came to them uh, in John 21. And early in the morning, after they'd fished all night and caught nothing, then he asked them, children, do you have any fish? And they said, no, no, we haven't got anything. And so Christ said, cast your net on the other side. And when that happened, the net was filled with fish. And so Christ said, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land, full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. So then Jesus invited them to eat breakfast. Now, as they were eating breakfast, Christ took bread, gave it to them, likewise the fish. 
Now, after they'd finished eating, we see then Christ turned and he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. Here we see as Christ makes this statement, he asks him a question. Peter, Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these fish? You know, 153 fish for a fisherman is a pretty good catch. And so Christ said, is this what you love? If he would have said, yes, this is what I love. I love these fish. Christ would have probably let him go back to fishing. But he just said, you know I love you. Well, Christ knew that, of course. And Christ asked that question to help Peter think it through in his own mind. And so Christ now says, hey, if you love me, feed my lambs. Notice who's, who the lambs and the sheep belong to. They belong to Christ. But the process of making disciples involves feeding and shepherding. And so as a result, he said to him, feed my lambs. But then Jesus said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? We see that he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. Then finally in verse 17, it says he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Now here we see a very key thing because this is the fourth call. He's expanding the leadership. Christ is going to go back to heaven in a short time. But before he goes, he wants the 12 and actually a larger group, the larger group as well, to be ready to carry on by making disciples of all nations. And so that process of uh, the third part of what we saw back in Matthew 28, not only did making disciples involve going, but involved baptizing, and then it involved showing them how to obey. As they taught them how to teach others to obey, it was by the same way that they had learned, by observing, participating. And so we see that this process, they were going out and Christ was going to serve them in love. He says, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so we see the process. We could say, to begin the process, it was evangelize, reach people for Christ. And once you've reached people for Christ, then you edify or you equip them or you teach them the word of God and build them up. Then as you build them up, then you begin to show them how to serve. The disciples followed the same process in Acts. And it says they showed and they taught. They taught and they showed. And Acts 20, 20 says, I've shown you and taught you publicly and from house to house. So now the disciples are the ones who are saying that same thing. And they're showing others how to minister. And so we see this process. They're expanding the leadership. Why? Because the commission that Christ gave was to take the gospel to all nations, the whole world. And we see that the gospel has spread to, to the nations and throughout the world today. Why? Because... Uh, Christians are following this process of making disciples and then extending. And so, as he said, as you're going, make disciples of all nations.